Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be discussing The Single Life, episode 10. Picking back up with DB and Ruben, it's the evening of their date out with Julian where he found out that Debbie was ready to get married to a whippersnapper on the other side of the planet. Ruben is very nervous about this new revelation and needs to make sure that there is no chance the two of them might rekindle their relationship. I don't want to spin my wheels and waste my time you know if there's something still lingering from her past so he tells her that julian has told him about osama and debbie's just looking around with her eyes really big move to morocco for someone um and then he like what is that <laughs> then he says he heard that osama was in his 20s and debbie's like oh no he said that person was like 20 years old or something. No! No! Debbie, you're kind of sending some mixed signals here. Debbie is also getting a little irritated with her son always swooping in and snatching away her fun. This to be my moment to find true love. And I don't want Julian you know, messing it up. So she tells Ruben that she had a deep connection with Osama and he acted very mature for his age, but it didn't work out. And they have no romantic future, Ruben. And that was it that we got for Dibby. We're back with John. Hip hip hooray. Last week, we watched as John told his woman, you're my girl. I'm gonna come move down there with ya. I don't wanna imagine my life without her. And I'm willing to do whatever it takes to stay together. So four days after telling her, he packed up all his magic wands and made the trip to San Antonio, Texas. He arrives at the house and Megan is tickled. She is so happy to see him. It was actually really cute. Cut on the crunch up. I mean. I can't believe it. So they get him settled in. We learn that Megan sleeps with her daughter, or at the very least, she will be sleeping with her daughter for a little while until John has been there longer. It's really crazy if you think about it. Like she's only seen him a few times in person and now he's moving in. But at least she's sleeping with her daughter though. Like that makes me feel a little bit better. I think Megan's my soulmate, you know? I think everybody does have one or maybe even a couple who know. I'm glad I met Megan and I think she's mine. The next morning, our sweet, sensitive John communicates to his beloved Megan that he didn't sleep well because he was all alone. So did you sleep good? Meh, slept alone, so it wasn't the best, but. Megan's like, of course I want us sleeping in the same bed. Just give me some more time. He's like, well, the sex can happen anywhere, sweetheart. I'm sorry, you didn't okay. sleep too well. Well, the sex, you don't have to be. Could be in a laundry room. <laughs> She doesn't say much and he reminds her that a healthy sex life is very important to him. She's like, mm, for real. John thinks that I'm gonna be having sex with him in the laundry room while my daughter is like having lunch. Like that's definitely not gonna happen. Oh my gosh, someone put in the comments, she looks like Cardi B and Amy Winehouse and now I can't unsee it. She has Cardi B's eyes and Amy's everything else. So anyways, she reassures him that they will be sleeping together soon, and then she pivots right over to proposal. I hope that you were wanting some kind of commitment, like physical commitment, as far as like a ring or something, but... It's his first morning there. He's like, this is a little fast. I mean, it seems like, you know, a little fast. Oh, yeah. Her reactions are so unclear. Like, it's really hard for me to read her unless she is like saying how she feels. I think so. I don't know, doesn't it? Seems a little fast to me. But you've done it before. Oh, no, 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 don't do that. Mm -mm. He wanted clarity on your feelings and you're trying to manipulate. He's like, yeah, Megan, it was a mistake. Okay, a mistake. I don't want to make another rush decision. And her response is like, eh. I have no doubt about who I want to spend the rest of my life with. That's you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's where it ends with these two. Now, let's move on to our pouty-faced Natalie. Have you guys noticed that her mom calls her Natasha? Why don't we also call her Natasha? It's 
too late now. I'm single, 38, in LA, um, alone, with no job, with mom. It's one month post breakup and Natalie and her mom are eating Eggo waffles warmed up in a pan. Is that cottage? No, it's powdered sugar. Oh. Natalie is feeling very hopeless at the moment because all of her hopes and dreams were dashed away when her relationship with Josh ended. She tells her mom that at 38 years old, she can't imagine herself starting over. I think this is her way of gently trying to tell her mom there will be no grandchildren. Yes, I'm on. I'll see you Michael. <sighs> Michael's on his way thanks to Mama. Mama says, are you upset with me, Natalie? <laughs> no, she's not. But I am. The drama with Natalie will never end, thanks to Mama. I hope Michael will bring some light into my life. How does she remain so hopeful? I guess it's better than being miserable. I, I don't want to see her crying anymore. She is constantly crying. Mom starts going into how wonderful Michael is because he supported her and was her friend during the war and helped to get her out. Natalie is like, Mom, that's a really beautiful picture that you're painting, but Michael isn't interested in me anymore. Like, we're done. Oh, Lord, look at Natalie. This makes me so crazy because Natalie loves her mom so much. So she's going to go through with something she doesn't want to do for her mom's sake. And then Natalie will be the one left hurt and crying in the end. Please tell me I'm not the only one going crazy listening to her. It's no wonder Natalie is so cuckoo. Okay, I can't take it anymore. We have to move past this. Okay, Natalie grabs her mom's hand and says, Yes, mom, I will try and make up with Michael. I know Natalie and her mom both love me and I love them, you know? I, I do. Um, we got history. So I felt a big sense of relief that mama made it to America. Okay, they finally made it. Everyone is together sitting down. It's like a farmer's market. Natalie starts talking about why she moved to Los Angeles for work. Then she randomly says, it's strange because I moved here for you. It's just so funny because I came to America for you. Like, how is he even supposed to respond to that? Like, it was so awkward. I think at this point, he's questioning the purpose of this get together. So he asks her, did you really come to LA for work or did you want to be with Josh and now you guys are broken up? Like he called it. Did you have a connection or anything? I mean, what was, or, or was it because of Josh you moved here and then you guys broke up? Ooh, I think he's angry. I think she needs to apologize to him for ripping his heart out. I can't remember if she's ever given him a heartfelt apology, or at least I don't know if it's on camera. Do you guys remember? I want to know that. Mother Ukraine is like, hey Michael, this is the time for us to all reconcile and be a family again. Please take me home so you and my super happy daughter can reconnect. Mama likes here, and for my opportunity, it is better because entertainment industry is just all around. Mike is like, oh, fine, Mama. I think it's really sweet how much love and respect he has for her. Like, neither one of them wants to be doing this, but they're both doing it to appease Mama. I mean, life is miracle. I mean, miracle happen. I believe in miracles. <laughs> Aww. Now I want them to work out. Dang it. All right, really quick, we got Veronica and Jamal. It's the next morning after their big fight and Veronica is feeling like a total ass. Jamal comes downstairs and tells us that after the blowout, he almost left to a hotel, but they ended up working it out and apologizing to one another. We both said things we probably shouldn't have said. Things got a lot better. The fact that we were both able to admit we were wrong, um, it really says a lot about our relationship. 
Jamal tells her he was able to recognize that she was in a high anxiety state and he knew to give her some space to cool down. But like with last night, I knew you weren't like in the right state, you know, and I wasn't going to hold it against you. Whoa, I think I'm starting to like Jamal. <sighs> hey, uh, sorry. Uh, hey, Jamal. Sorry for calling you a loser several times. Sorry. So he tells her that he's likely going to be moving to Charlotte soon and he feels like they are closer than ever and she drops him off at the airport and that was it. Okay, finally we have Chantal. We've got nothing of importance with Chantal, which is nothing new. She is again telling us that he's not showing her enough attention, like if they're not making out 24-7, then he must be mad at her about something. Like all the affection that I was having before from him has disappeared and I just don't understand why. Like, what did I do? It's honestly more juvenile than high school. Like, I don't remember this level of immaturity coming from but one female girlfriend. She would throw herself at guys and they didn't want it and then she would be devastated and brokenhearted wondering what she did wrong and she just smothered the crap out of him. I can't control what a person does to me, how a person treats me. All I can do is accept it or walk away from it. In the next episode, Debbie confronts Julian about his involvement in her relationship with Ruben. Mr. Spartica tells Chantal he likes her. Wow. I want to see where this is going to go when I leave, but on the other hand, I can't afford another broken heart. And we'll watch Natalie and Michael talking, and it doesn't look like it goes very well. We've been separated for years. Have you met someone? Tune in next week to watch the tragedies unfold. Bye!